Hey guys, I want to show you how I fixed the hands. Um, so my goal would be to get the model to this more of an A pose, right? When I first drew the model, he had his hands at his sides. So if you're in the same predicament where Mixmo is giving you issues, um, select, say from the wrist down, and then use Grow Selection, Shift and Period, right, until you get close. I'm using a wireframe mode just because I've got two models in here. Um, I'm going to take this all back to my low poly model. So in wireframe mode, if we could probably get rid of some of these. I think I've got a double set of these pauldrons now. So with um, the arm selected, what I can do is use, well, I can use tab to select, first of all. Uh, it makes life a bit easier to paint, right? And then I can also turn on soft select with B, which turns things yellow. And I can access that tool properties by double clicking the first tool. It'll open tool settings and then expand soft selection. You can change the fall off radius here or what's the clever shortcut? I swear I just had it. B and middle mouse lets you see visually how big that uh, fall off distance is going to be, right? So best thing to do is switch now to the rotation tool and test out um, the rotation because if I rotate from here though, I get a bad result. I want to hold D, D for dog, to move the pivot. If I need to reset it, I have it in my tool settings here. So you might notice later that your pivot on another object is off. It just means you need to go back to the tool settings and hit reset here. Then I'll rotate out a little bit and see what's going on in this area here because I don't really want this to deform much, if at all. Might need to move up slightly. And then I'll use shift comma to try and deselect areas so that I'm not moving all the polys on the arm. Looks like that kind of worked against me in this low poly version. It worked better in my high poly. Um, so you're going to have to experiment a little bit here based on your, your own model. right? But what I want to try to avoid is too much change going on in the hard parts of my character's body. Right? These, this is the collarbone. The rib cage, these should not um, be tampered with too much, but the arm, right, we want, still want the arm to come out. You can also change inside soft selection how it's going to detect the nearby uh, vertices and faces, right? Um, I changed mine to surface. If you have it on volume, it sometimes will cross over, right? to an area that it's not immediately touching. So um, try soft surface out. It doesn't look like it works as well with low poly. I'm going to have to do a little bit more manual labor here to rotate these. I'm just being careful. And I know it's hard to see for me too what's going on here. All right, I will need to hide this other model. Thanos here from the freaking gauntlet. Let's go, guy. Let's move your, move your big old arm into place. Keep making my life difficult by having these burly characters, I swear. Next year, light on their feet. Rogue character. Okay, let's see this part. Some ugly geometry there. Uh, I can 
also consider moving my pivot right closer down to where I'm working. Put that hand into place. And then I did the same thing to move the fingers further apart, um, but I've not tested this new pose yet now. So not super successful at getting all of those edge loops to stay where I wanted them. This is my high poly mesh. Should be able to just hide him. Uh, vertex mode with the lasso is also a good bet sometimes if I want to move a lot of stuff at the same time. For most of you, right, who don't have a second um, version of your file, right, or actually you could just import another uh, file in here, maybe delete the rest of the character and just position the arm first. But uh, what I did, right, is I had smoothed my model with just the smooth tool here. Um, also in an effort to test what was going on with the hands, right, because once I smoothed, um, I had more um, edge loops or more edges here at the wrist to join the hand. I didn't have to do so much chopping on the hand. But um, I kind of don't want to have a high poly mesh to deal with, to be honest. So I'm going back also because I covered it with armor, right? So I don't think I'm going to worry about it. Uh, high poly this time, although I might still bake the high poly character down, which is the advantage of holding onto a high poly. And turn soft select off, also B being the shortcut. Um, if you are in symmetry mode, don't forget to turn that off as well before mirroring. And actually, last thing to do is oh, I want to delete the history. Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick video on finalizing um, your model before you get into texturing. Um, just because sometimes there are some, some easy steps to miss here or things that seem easy um, to take kind of a shortcut and then will uh, cause you some pain later. So the first being that I've, I've caught recently with Substance Painter is that it likes to now um, bring in the Maya Hypershade texture setup that you had um, into your Substance Painter project. So when I imported this character right through, uh, I'll demonstrate that in a minute, uh, but I had this belt buckle as its own separate piece, and I guess it had a different texture on it in Maya, and now it's taking up its own um, UV map just for this one small piece on my project, right? And then the other pieces are split up based on colors that I assigned just because they helped uh, split the character up a little bit, right? Visually, um, so I could concentrate on, you know, rounding out certain pieces that were a bit jagged, which 
I just messed with this one, which that falls into that category, or just testing different um, color contrast areas, right? Like where I still need uh, objects of interest. So I talked about before, you know, one test you need to do with uh, any object that you design characters included is to just focus on piece by piece and look at, you know, each little part of that character and just make sure that there's something interesting to look at at each stage, right? Each part should have some sort of uh, touch of detail for the viewer um, just so that they can think about it or, you know, keep things interesting. So it's good to make a pass on that, you know, all through your, your design phase. Um, but now that I'm ready to go over to Substance Painter, right, the problem with having this multi-texture setup and having, say, it looks like I have three different materials on this guy, right? So in my case, um, it's split up in, into these three materials. Um, it doesn't seem like a big deal, and it's really not, you know, like you're going to get more um, detail in your textures by splitting them up because it's going to take up more pixels overall, right? The problem really is when you're bringing things into Unity from here, now you have, say, at least four or five textures per material, right? And then you have three materials on this character. So you're going to be fiddling around with Unity materials for three times as long. Um, and remember, that's not just the first time that you apply it to the character. If you go back and make any changes now, you know, you might be updating 16 different PNG image files that are applied to a single object. Um, you expand that to an AGP even size, you know, project where you might have several characters. Now you have four characters times 16, right? Now you have 64 character, uh, 64 texture files just for four characters. It can get out of hand really quickly. So rather concentrate on the single texture map per object, you know, with the whole character in mind as the object. Um, to accomplish that, right, and to reverse the effect of having multiple different hypershade materials applied to your character, right, which I've just, again, just have a few of them for Lambert's, is I will just assign one material to all of them. Hey guys, I wanted to show you the final steps that I'm going to used to export this guy over to Substance Painter, right? Or prepping for uh, my UV editing. Now, I have an older version of this guy that I had uploaded to Substance just to try some stuff out. Um, get a feel for what materials I needed still, right? Uh, remember, you can add materials to your uh, shelf here inside of Substance Painter by right-clicking on one of these existing materials, right, show and explore in Windows, and you can drag the downloaded SBSAR files uh, into one of these materials folders or into these, like, the Smart Materials folders. Um, that way it's always going to find it, right, and you don't necessarily need to mess with it. Um, I suppose you could have it live somewhere else. Um, you can also drag and drop things into your project folder and then it'll come up with an import question. Um, so this was a not quite finalized model um, because I've not UV unwrapped it. Um, you can see here is the result of um, the Substance Painter itself actually unwrapping my character, right? When I import a new object into Substance now. It has a little checkbox that says, do you want to auto unwrap? And it will produce something like this. Now, for me, this isn't super useful because even though I can stay inside the painting window, right, and say I'm working on playing with some gold armor here, 
right? As I want to add color, I'm painting into the mask map, right? Just to test out color placement, right? Any embellishments that I might add to this character. But notice that it's not painting everywhere. This is the other bug um, that I want you guys to avoid here is since I had three different materials on it inside of Maya, there are now three different UV maps applied to this one object. And it's not ideal just because you have so many uh, UV maps floating around. You have so many textures floating around, right? If I have three uh, materials on this one character, right, it might seem nice because I get a pretty high resolution texture. But when I'm um, painting it, right, I have to swap between these texture sets. And even on like a desktop computer, right, it takes a minute for it to catch up and reload all these materials and calculate all the lighting and so on. Um, this is going to get compounded when you go into Unity, right? And then you have to drag, you know, 16 materials onto one character object. Um, if you, you know, or in my case, it would be 12 materials, right? Or maybe 15, depending on what I exported. Um, so don't forget down the line, right? We're going to be exporting HD render pipeline to four. Uh, these are not even the ones that I need. Um, should be four different output maps, right? Or texture maps, color, metallic, uh, roughness and um, yeah, one other one could be transparency, right? Which you bake into your um, your color map. But anyway, um, before I go out of Maya this time, right? I want to get rid of all these different like vertex colors that I've assigned in, inside here um, because that's what's and also to combine all these items into one object properly, right? So I've already um, done a whole pass on this object where I stitched the armor into the character. So now he's all one piece uh, above the kind of bodysuit or base mesh, right? Um, but I still have a few floating pieces here. I can just hit the combine button right in the mesh bar here or mesh combine. Now I have a stack of history, so I want to delete that stack. And now I can pop over into the UV editor. And in the very least, right, what I want to probably do is just do a UV automatic um, so that I can kind of see how many pieces I'm dealing with and, you know, how small these cuts are all appearing on the UV map. Um, so working, you know, at a larger scale, geez, I never maximize it. That's just too brutal, right? Um, but working at a larger scale, right, when we're using 2048 texture maps is you have to think about it in terms of, okay, it's almost really this big, right? If this is a normal 1024 texture map, um, in a 2048 by 2048 texture map, it's actually going to be four times the size. So it, it feels packed when it's in here, but really on, on the texture space, it's um, a lot more room than we were dealing with last year or with, with 1K, 1024 textures. Should be plenty for our character. Now, the automatic unwrap also not going to do you much good because it does catch everything, but it also snips everything up into way too many pieces. The downside of this being that when you're painting, Right, even though it is a single texture, say I am looking for these middle portions. No, where am I looking for? Um, the character's teeth, right? Like that's a bit of a small one. Say this diamond armor, right? Notice that I've painted it in here, but I have to use the uh, paintbrush and the fill polygon brush because. UV chunk fill is going to just be like way over the top um, since all of these different areas are um, stitched together, right, rather than separated out. So it's also hard for me to wrap my brain around the UV painting, right, and I just kind of have to ignore this window um, 
because it's so distracting when I'm trying to think about, okay, where does this texture need to live on the character? It doesn't really translate, right? These bends and, and unwraps are just too complicated for my brain to really wrap its head around. It's like, what on earth? I'm sure it makes sense to the computer, right, that these are the legs, I suppose, but <laughs> my brain is struggling to see it. Oh, it's a camera upwards from... <laughs> from here or something. Oh no. So it's too too much, right? What we rather want to do is be a little more stingy with our UV unwrap by separating out the limbs, right, ideally. Um, or if you've got a lot of polys on your character, sheesh, I've got how many now? Uh, 5,600 faces. Hey guys, um, I'm working on my UV unwrap, so I thought I'd show you some techniques that I'm using, largely about deciding on your seams, right? Um, if you can separate objects into simpler pieces, right? Here I just uh, extracted the ears from my helmet region because they are welded, and I also extracted my character's teeth. Right, so the trick to doing that was getting a good selection ring. Um, this became difficult at this stage of my model because I've added all sorts of triangles everywhere. Uh, if you still have just quads, you can select edge loops all day long and uh, they should generally behave themselves. But you have to get a little more creative when selecting um, areas with triangles, right, or areas that you might have uh, booleaned and then removed. But the advantage being that now I can go to UV shell selection mode and separate out pieces that are just going to have one material to them, like the teeth. Right, um, so I do like to catch some of these main parts of the face, right here at the eyeballs that need to be unwrapped again. Um, but remember, our best friend is typically the unfold tool. Um, just don't expect it to necessarily solve all your problems by itself in that you might have to still do some cutting right, in order for it to, uh, to understand what to do next. So say along here, my two shortcuts for cutting, Shift X and Shift S. Right, if I cut that, and now I use unfold. It gives me a pretty decent piece of geometry to work with. I might want to cut this last edge, right? So unfold is definitely one of our, our best friends. And it looks like uh, symmetry is actually working inside of the UV editor now that um, it seems to be a bit of a miracle because it didn't used to work very well. But here you can see I can select this edge loop by just double clicking because I know that that goes all the way up. But that particular one being no good because it's at the front right, of the character where somebody might see it. I want to think about the loop where it's going to be least noticeable, right, where there might be a change in angle or um, just that the camera is unlikely to be zoomed in on. Make a cut, go to UV shell and unfold it. Do a few optimize to catch these small areas. Alrighty guys, so pretty much got my character textured um, after a long and grueling unwrap, um, but I can still see some issues or some dissimilarities between uh, my Substance Painter texture file, right, and my Unity file, or my Unity render. Um, so even in render view, it's a little more pronounced that the uh, metallic map is actually the one causing me some issues here. Despite having... Um, Let's see, I got this really blown out uh, edge highlight. There might be an extra light in my scene or something, though. So character's almost ready to go. I haven't cleaned up his uh, skin weights yet, so I might try and record that video. His 
shoulder pad shouldn't be deforming. They should stick straight out. Um, also been working on getting, for me, you know, since I have another character, I'm going to bring him into this world and probably try and have them fight. Right, so I have a version of this Viking character. And I think side by side they're going to uh, put up a good fight. So that's why I have this axe in the scene as well. Um, so I wanted to show you guys the process of kind of finalizing my model and um, getting it out the door to be properly um, textured. The unwrap ended up taking me like a week because of the amount of uh, booleans and things that I used to um, to add the armor pieces to make it all one one uh, internal, you know, or one complete mesh with no internals. Right. And very few parts that are separate, you know, I think the shoulder pads, the arm pads, and then the neck piece are the only pieces that can, like, actually move off of the model. Um, right, but they still have geometry underneath. So the advantage to having all of the armor pieces together, right, is that in motion, um, as long as you have thought about keeping it low poly right then the uh, the deformations that occur across that model um, aren't going to be distracting right there's no pieces of the armor there say in this middle part that are stretching too much or, or uh, going out of place just because um, you know I did have a lot of armor on this guy so you don't want your parts that are supposedly you know steel to be uh, bending in any way that is distracting. Um, so I still need to fix these shoulder pads in the uh, skin weights, like I mentioned, but relatively minor um, issue there. So once I had my character re um, topologized basically, or just merged all together, and I'd caught all of the little sneaky vertices and things that were um, hiding inside. The, uh, the internals of my model, you know, I really had to dig around uh, from the inside out at times to get some of these places to look right and uh, not to have any end gons, right? I'm sure I still have a couple end gons up here um, somewhere, but all in all, he was exporting fine, and really the unwrap was just going to be in service of the texture. Um, I had another version of his texture where I let the automatic unwrap do its work and it was a bit too strange looking for me. Um, this texture I let the UV editor actually do all the work with the layout tool and I kind of regret using one of the settings in there so I'll show you that. Because um, when I had originally unwrapped it, right, I had been keeping in mind that things like, say, the helmet here should be a bit bigger, right? Um, so that when it comes to the texel density, right, which unfortunately I have not found the um, the tool that lets you see that in uh, more easily in, in Maya, but there is a very handy slider in Blender that lets you see it. Um, so giving, you know, more pixels say to areas that that need it let me just dial up the, the size here so we can just see the, the difference right so the advantage to using modify layout here right is that it is going to fit all of your shells into a single uh, square right u1 v1 and on top of that it's also going to resize everything so that all of your checkerboards are about the same size. Um, so unfortunately with a character, right, I should actually have gone in and made some changes to that. So maybe we should look at that workflow now just because some of you will also run into these kinds of uh, texturing issues. So let's say I'm ready to um, send the unwrap out, right? So this is ready to go to Substance Painter, um, but I haven't like actually export it yet. What I'd want to do 
I just have all of my shells selected. Um, so you guys have probably seen me demo this before, but when I'm working right, usually I keep my shells out in one side or I have like all the pieces over in one side and then I start to move things back to the center um, or into the middle here. So when I was doing that before, I had things like the chest piece here, you know, actually next to the piece that it's the back piece, for instance, here, right? And also like giving it a little more size just because it is more prominently featured on the model, right? It's going to be the first one of the first things that you look at. Same with the head, right? Instead of having this weird uh, stretched face, right? I'd rather it line up central so then I can actually see, okay, this is the visor. These are the cuts for his um, tusks here. So if I can line things up right and then also give them more uh, pixel density, pixel density, right, that can be a good thing. Um, all these other pieces I've unwrapped using methods that I've shown you guys, right, most commonly just being to select a chunk that I want to work with, right, and either using best plane or cylindrical. Very rarely, you know, I'll use a spherical or a camera based. Um, I used camera based for the hands actually, um, just because they were at this angle, but that turned out not to be so great. I find that um, for unwrapped tools, right, using the best plane is actually going to give you a lot of good results. So now, say we're looking at layout. We have all of our shells unwrapped. I'm going to change my packing resolution to 2K, 2048 by 2048, texture map size as well. I'm going to make sure I bump up the shell padding and tile padding a little bit here. Um, you don't need to necessarily go quite as high, but this prevents overflow uh, when you're texture painting, right? And you get into like some close little areas here, right? You can start to um, give you some weird edges. So I shouldn't just be drawing on my texture willy nilly. All right, so I probably got a few too many things running right now. This is also going to tell me, right, that I'm distributing to tile 1 1. And there is a teeny tiny little tick box here rotate shells, which I didn't really mean to do when I uh, when I exported because I had things like here where I wanted to paint some details on them. Um, I wanted to have them line up, right? It's not such a big deal when it's just a round piece or you know a piece that's going to be a single texture. Um, but when I'm actually putting like some sort of surface details on there, it's going to help me to have them. Um, lined up straight up and down. So let's see what this does then if I do rotate, keeping in mind that these three pieces are actually the only ones that I have not rotated. This does take a minute. Okay, so really handy tool, keeps everything again same UV size. It did resize the helmet back down. So Okay, so I was recording for a while there. <laughs> uh, so I'm going through the output templates on uh, on Substance Painter, right? And I'm noticing that my metallic map isn't uh, showing here. So if I'm looking for my metallic, it looks like it's coming out into this brown channel here, right? This is where I see all of the uh, the different things that can be exported. So metallic being exported into the R channel. So that might not be ideal for me, right? I might want to make a new, say, RGB and I'll put the metallic directly into this, right? Um, so this would be from the, oops, so 
now I tell it, okay, get the gray channel from metallic, which is the same thing that's going on here, and just make the RGB metallic. Let's see if this does anything. So once I've messed with the output templates, right, again, I can get rid of this emissive one because I don't have an emission, emission map or a glow map set up inside of um, Substance Painter. Um, but again, depending on what engine you're going to be rendering in, right, in my case HDRP, you do want to be checking what the material inputs are, at least for, you know, some of these default textures. And if things, you know, aren't looking the way that you're hoping them, uh, they would look, you might have to, to jump in here and, and do a little bit digging. Um, I've had good luck with this Autodesk Interactive um, as far as the HDRP ones, but it looks like it needs an upgrade. Oh, I might even be in the URP, so let's check if the Autodesk Interactive here picks it up, where you just need to tell it which maps to use. Roughness and metallic. See, it gets a little confusing of like which goes where. Roughness. Okay, okay. This all is way too shiny. Alright, so let's see if I export now a new map. Let's just make a new folder for it. Oh, not, not a new, new folder. Come on, substance, remember where I was. See if it is the URP, I wonder. Let's move this. Versus roughness, okay. That's, I think it should just be roughness. With the metallic, all right. So now we should have the roughness map. folder. It's the wrong naming convention, but anyway. Uh, or sorry, the metallic map. Okay, so metallic. Let's see if this texture is happier when it has metallic on there. summoned. Let's see what the map that came in here. What's going on here? Ask Metallic. Also seems to be flat, right? Like it's not. Oh, but then it wants me to dial up here. Okay, dial up to one. There we go. Okay. That being closer now. The metallic hooked up, right? That this is shiny. Shiny. Generally. I want my sliders to either remain at default or at max or min, right? I don't I don't want to have like materials that require me to have sliders at 924 necessarily for transferability. Um, but when you're tweaking in a scene, right, and you've got everything in here together, it's not the end of the world if you, uh, if you mess with the sliders, right? if it's going to be the final scene. So... Yeah, the 
Looks like I am in a URP project. Um, I don't know why. I was thinking I was in HDRP. Post processing volume. Maybe it is HDRP. Um, yeah, I would have made an HDRP. I don't know why I would have made a URP. So, something in here is telling me HDRP, but let's see how everything looks together. Still some texture issues on my Viking. It's missing some bits. Whew. Looks like Viking guy is going to get an arm chopped off. I don't know if he's got enough, got enough armor. So my plan was he goes on the offensive. All right, troll guy uh, has to, to use his armor. To, uh, to keep the guy kind of at bay. So, that's going to be your pipeline, right? I also just threw um, some animations in here to get the troll moving around so I could test his animations. Um, my next step now is to go back to Maya and specifically looking at the um, the FBX that I downloaded from Mixamo to then clean up his skin weights. So let's take a quick peek at that. Okay, so I dragged the Mixamo FBX into my project or into and just a new Maya file. Uh, turn on X-ray joints just so I can see, and then. Hopefully you guys were in class when we did this, um, because now we have to fix some of these errors, right, where we don't necessarily want parts to bend on the skin. So this mesh now has a skin binding, right, that binds it to these bones, um, but the reason why we use the Mixamo binding is that it just does such a nice job. Um, of getting you a baseline that really, like, it's only going to be a few places that um, that I'll need to clean up, right? So to do the skin weights part, uh, hopefully you guys are going to check out that video. Um, it's a little more risky if we've got like more serious issues, say like the neck joint being a little bit out of place here. Um, can cause some some problems, right? Like the neck turning there, but usually it's just the head turning. So I need to do some cleanup on the back of the head. Um, yeah, definitely bring your skinned mesh back into Maya right before you call it a day, um, so that you can catch some of those waiting issues. Now it's not mission critical to jump into this directly from UV unwrapping, right, which was already just a pain. Um, also remember you cannot mess with anything on the mesh now that he has a skeleton. Uh, if you touch, you know, if you start welding vertices or adding cuts and things, um, any new vertices will not have a vertex weight assigned to a bone and they'll just sit there and it might end up reordering other vertices into a different number, which means that they can, you know, you might have parts misbehaving and getting crushed into each other. Um, but what I was saying is you don't actually have to touch up your skin weights right away. You can go get your animation stuff done, right? Still work on the texture. All of those stay kind of separate. Um, in that if I bring the, um, say, if I update the skin weights here and I bring the new skeleton into Unity, right, the animation stuff is separate from that specific skeleton, um, so I don't necessarily have to worry about it. And this is not the way to do your animation for your final, right? This is just a test animation. Um, But that lives separately than, than the character, right? I can still go and change the texture in Photoshop. I just can't really mess with the UVs.
past this point, right? So that's why UVing is kind of a big deal, and that's why so many companies are invested in uh, automatic UV unwraps and things now, is because the process is just so painful, um, and why also we have things like photogrammetry and like uh, pixel shading in ZBrush, right, to, to sidestep the, the pains of UV unwrapping. Um, but now once we have the skeleton in there, right, we don't touch the mesh, we don't touch the UVs, we can still mess with the texture and potentially um, I can still add things on here, like I'm still going to add his cloak behind him. Um, I just want to do that as an experiment inside of Unity, so I'll use the um, Unity tools in order to uh, to create a, the cloth physics that I'm going to want on him. So if he's got a big old cloak in the background, hopefully it's not going to be too uh, too difficult to get it working with the the animations. Um, so next videos, I guess I'm going to be looking at helping you guys set up your Unity scene. Um, and then, you know, at this point, you should also be trying to knock out as many models as you can for your background. Um, you know, slapping Substance Painter textures on the ones that where it's easy and it's all a single material. I'm not too worried if you have, um, you know, bits and pieces missing or like some slapdash texturing on your your environment stuff. But if you're making a portfolio piece, right, then put a little more effort into it and try to match the theme. Try, uh, again, using all substance textures helps just to unify things, right? Even these two guys made a year apart, right? They feel like they're from the same universe because their materials match, right? It can, can be a lot harder to do that when you're um, when you're just putting repeating materials on stuff. So good luck, guys. Hopefully UV unwrapping is treating you well and you're uh, having a little more fun on the texturing side of stuff. Um, all of this only took me an afternoon, right? I did this this morning and I'm just like adding some uh, some more detail areas and touching up. Um, but your the texturing, you know, is not all that difficult. It's just the, you know, getting the textures down using your masking technique, you know, add a black mask to a texture, then paint inside the mask with brush and with polygon fill and um, UV chunk fill. And then it's just kind of getting a good balance of your different materials, right? Like trying to use the 60-30-10 rule, right? probably 60% silver, right, 30% in the um, purple, and then, you know, 10 on the uh, the troll skin, the green. Um, I also, ooh, I've got some empty bits there, must have been why I'm not selecting the toes. Uh, and then I put some, some dull leather in a few places, like on the hands and on the feet. Um, just because those parts already had other things going on. Uh, I had a few pieces that felt a bit lifeless as just pure solid silver, you know, steel. So I went back and I gave them um, some surface details by, by bringing in more of the purple, right? Which kind of um, helps unify them a little bit, helps like lead your eye across the character. Um, the, the hands and the arms lacking a bit of purple from the front view, but I think when he's in position, he'll have enough going on there. Again, trying to use repeating shapes from the knee pad, that kind of diamond shape. Uh, still not happy with what I did with the belt buckle, but hey, it's not a not a major feature. Um, so yeah, enjoy the texturing side, guys. Hopefully um, you have a little fun in Substance Painter. It's kind of the the dessert of the character process, right? And then getting uh, getting the animations on it is going to be a whole other ball game because we got to go through uh, and make cameras and things um, and get all of our Mixamo animations imported. So we'll look at that stuff during the week.
good luck. Take it easy.